Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem construct binary tree from in order and post order traversal. There's a very similar problem leak code 105. I've solved that problem before. This one is similar, but I think this one is slightly more difficult. So as you may recall, in order traversal is where we start at the root and we traverse the entire left subtree and then we process the root node. So if we were printing all of these, we would print nine first, then we would print three, and then we would print the entire right subtree but we would do it recursively. So we would run in order traversal on the right subtree itself. So from here, we wouldn't process 20 or print it first. We would go to its left subtree, print everything here. There's just a single one, 15. Then we would print the root and then we would print the right subtree, which is just seven. Post order is where we print the entire left subtree first. And then instead of printing the root, we print the entire right subtree. And then after that, we print the root node. So it would look something like printing nine, then recursively running post order here. So we print the entire left subtree, 15. Then we print the entire right subtree, seven. Then we print the root 20 and then we print the root here three. So given these two traversals, can we reconstruct the tree exactly? Well, yes, that's the problem statement. So we assume it's possible. But one thing they don't state here, it's listed all the way at the bottom of the description is that every node is going to be unique and that's going to be important in solving this problem. Every value is gonna be unique. So given these two traversals, what will be the root node? Do we even know what the root is going to be? Well, in our post order, remember, which is listed down here, the last node is always going to be the root. By definition, we print the entire left, then the right, and then we print the root last. So at least we know what the root is. We know for sure the root is always gonna be the last value in the post order traversal. So let's construct our tree over here. We have the root. That's all we know. We don't know the left subtree or the right subtree, but since this is a tree problem, you can assume that we're gonna probably be able to do this recursively. We want to now, build the left subtree or maybe build the right subtree. How do we do it? Well, once again, let's go to our handy dandy post order traversal. Remember how we traversed this in post order? We did nine, then 15, then 17, and then 20, and then three. Notice how the second to last node is always going to be the right child of three. Well, assuming it has a right child. If it doesn't have a right child, then probably the left child is going to be the second to last value in the post order traversal. But let's assume that 20 is the right child. Let's assume that the second to last is gonna be the right child. Or instead of assuming, how do we know if it is or not? Well, let's remember we do have additional information. We have an in order traversal as well. Let's take that three that we just used because the three that we used tells us something. It tells us how many nodes are gonna be on the left side of it and how many are gonna be on the right side of it. Not using the post order, but using the in order traversal we know because take a look at the in order traversal. This is what it is. We know that the three goes here and this is why it's important that every value is going to be unique in the tree because if we had multiple threes, then we wouldn't have this information. But since there are unique values here, we know the three is right here. We know based on in order traversal, everything on the left side here is gonna be in the left subtree. We don't know exactly where, but we know that. And we know everything here is gonna be in the right subtree. We don't know the exact structure, but we at the very least know that. So now this is kind of how we are going to build this recursively. And this is gonna be a bit tricky, but should we build the left subtree first or should we build the right subtree first? This is why the fact is important that the second to last node in the post order traversal is going to be the right child if it exists. That's why we're going to attempt to build the right subtree first. And we know for sure, actually in this case, that 20 is gonna be the right child of three because our in order traversal tells us that the right subtree is non-empty. If 
our three value here was actually all the way over here, then we would know that there's nothing to the right of it, therefore the right subtree is empty. But it's not, it's in the middle, therefore we do have some values in the right subtree. So now, recursively, we are gonna try to build the right subtree. But how exactly are we gonna do that? Well, we should probably pass in this subarray as the in order portion of our subtree. For the post order traversal, for simplicity, we're gonna pass in the entire array because what we know is we're always gonna be popping from the last value in the post order traversal. So this keeps it simple for us. And recursively, we're just gonna repeat the steps now. We're going to pop from the post order. We're gonna get that 20. We know it's going to be the root of this subtree. And then the in order portion of the array that we passed in, which was going to be 15, 20, and seven, we know these nodes are gonna make up this subtree. We're going to find the 20 value, which goes right here. And we're gonna see, yes, we have a left subtree with just a single node, and we have a right subtree with just a single node. So then we're gonna try to build those subtrees. We're gonna start with the right subtree first, as usual. Once again, now we're gonna pop from our post order traversal. Notice how it's that exact same seven that we were expecting. So we put that seven here, and the in order portion of the array that we passed in when we made this recursive call was just seven. Since we have seven now, we look to the right of seven, there's nothing there. We look to the left of seven, there's nothing there. So we're pretty much done with with this portion of the subtree. We're gonna pop back up. If you remember, this is the portion of the in-order traversal that we passed into this subtree. We already made this uh, 20, we made the seven. Now 15 is gonna be the left child. And notice how when we pop from post-order traversal, we already popped these three values. When we pop 15, it's exactly what we were expecting. So we put 15 here. And then we're done with this subtree. So then we pop back up to the root. And remember from here, we wanted to build the right subtree first because that made it easy with our post order traversal. Now we're gonna build the left subtree. And when we pop from post order to build that, we get the nine that we were expecting. So this is not super easy to come up with, but you can see it does make sense. The reason I was able to solve it so easily is because I solved the previous one, 105. I recommend checking that out if you struggle with this problem. Very quickly, the time complexity of this solution, the way I'm doing it, the time complexity of this solution is big O of N squared, at least the simple way. And you can make an optimization which makes it big O of N. I'll show you both code solutions because it makes sense going from N squared to big O of N. Let's do that right now. So as we try to build the tree, we know the root node is the easy part. We just take our post order and pop the last value from it. And that's how we can create our root node. So I'm gonna create a node, tree node constructor passing in that value and we're gonna call this our root value. Then we want to know the index that this appears in, in the in order array. So we're gonna say in order dot index of this value, which is root dot value. So let's call this the index. And then we wanna start building the subtrees. We wanna start with the right subtree and we're gonna assign that to root.write. So how do we build that? Let's recursively call self.buildtree. The only thing is now the parameters are gonna be different. Well, post order is gonna be the same. It's pretty simple. So we're just gonna pass in post order. We're always gonna pop from the end of our post order array, but in order matters. It could be empty, it could be null. So we're gonna take in order and basically slice it. We want the right portion, everything to the right of this index. So we're going to say start at index plus one and then go up until the end of that array. Similarly, when we build the left subtree, we're gonna do it just like this, except assigning it to root.left, and we want everything to the left of this index. So we're gonna start at the beginning of the in-order array and go up until the index, but not including the index in Python. That's exactly what this will do. This is non-inclusive. So with this, we're building the two subtrees. The only thing is, what's our base case? At what point will we return null? Well, if we don't have any nodes to the left of that index or to the right of it, that's how we're gonna return null. How are we gonna know if that's the case? Well, this in order array that we're slicing, if it ever is null, we pass in null, 
which would happen if not in order, then we're going to return null. After we build the tree, we just want to return the root. So if I run this code, it will work even though it's not the most optimal solution. So let's try to improve this. This is n squared because of two reasons. We're having to find the index of a value in an array. That means we're linearly scanning through the in order array. And the second reason is we're creating a subarray when we don't necessarily need to. So let's improve this. This part is the easy part. Why should we have to scan through the array when we could just pre-do that work? We could pre-compute it using a hash map. So I'm going to create a hash map called in order index. In Python, it's pretty easy. I'm going to say for i v in enumerate the in order array, and I'm going to have the value be the key and mapping that to the index. So every value in the in order array is going to be mapped to some index. That's pretty much what this is doing. If you're not familiar with Python, this is just a concise way to write it, but you could, you know, write out the entire for loop, but this is pretty simple what this is doing here. Now, instead of having to scan through the array, we can use this hash map. So I'm going to copy and paste it, use this hash map, and then use the root dot value as the key. And that will give us the index and we don't have to scan through the array. This is an O of one operation now. The second thing is we're having to pass in subarrays. We don't have to create these subarrays because instead of passing them in, we can just pass in the indexes that define that subarray. So to do that, though, we're going to need a different function header. So I'm going to actually within this function, create another function header, which I'm going to call helper. And instead of passing in the actual arrays themselves, since we know post order isn't really changing, we don't even have to pass that in as a parameter. We just have to pass in the boundaries of the in order array, the left and right boundaries of that array. So now I'm just going to tab this. And when we call our helper now, we're going to be passing in zero as the starting left index and the length of in order minus one as the right index. And we're going to return the result of this, which will be the root node. But just a couple more things we have to change here. Now here, instead of calling self dot build tree, we're going to call this helper function. Make sure to remember to do that. I forgot to, which is what caused me a few bugs. So updating that and the parameters here that we're going to be passing in instead of passing in the arrays, we want to pass in the boundaries. So everything to the right of this index. Well, given these boundaries left and right, we want everything to the right of this index. We're going to say index plus one is going to be the left boundary and the right boundary is going to remain unchanged. Now for the left subtree, we want everything to the left of this index. So we're going to have our left index remain unchanged because that's the leftmost index and our right index is going to be index minus one. We want everything to the left of this value. Now there's just one last thing to change the base case. How do we know now if the in order portion of the array is empty? Because that's the base case clearly here, but we're not passing in the in order subarray here anymore. So how do we know if it's empty? Well, we would know if the left pointer crosses the right pointer. Like, for example, if the left and right indices were equal, then we have this index. And then here we call index plus one. Well, then index plus one is going to be greater than this value. That would happen when we reach the case where the left and right indices are equal. So if the left pointer crosses the right pointer, which means that left is greater than right, then we're going to return null. So now the code is pretty much complete. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, it does. And it's definitely more efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.